Hi everyone and welcome to part 4 of my Paris vlog. I'm sure you can guess where my mom and I went today. We had breakfast and then hopped into an Uber to one of the most well-known locations on earth. I had a pretty cool Uber driver who was recommending a lot of places to eat and even complimented my French. The first stop, Place du Trocadero. If you're following me on Instagram, you got a behind the scenes look of how I take pictures when traveling solo and it's not very orthodox. The crowds are pretty sparse in between Place du Trocadero and the Eiffel Tower. However, as you approach it, the crowds become more dense. I'm not sure what it's like to live in these apartments, but I'm sure the residents don't enjoy all the foot traffic. I'm in that famous Rue de University. As you can tell, it is extremely crowded, but we have an epic view of the Eiffel Tower here. It's super crowded. I would recommend getting here early. After we felt satisfied of the amount of time we spent admiring the Eiffel Tower, it was onwards to Le Bon Marché. I did some further research into this very selective department store and it happens to be the first ever department store in the world. It opened in 1852 and it's truly a unique spot that houses so many different artists and designers. Even though this store houses similar items to the other malls I've been to, everything here just felt a little more elevated, more sophisticated, more classy, and more timeless. The higher up you go, the more unattainable these items are. The brands on the top floor cater to a different kind of customer, and even the sales associates on those floors had a different demeanor about them. If you're wondering what it's like, it really caters towards the old money and quiet luxury aesthetic. As lunch was fast approaching, my mom and I made our way next door to La Grande Pisserie. Many items they have were made exclusively for this store and a lot of the food is made on site. Whether you're looking for wine, cheese, authentic French food, desserts, or even Asian food, it's here. This is somewhat of an international market similar to World Market in the States and I found a US section. They had a lot of Heinz condiments, and of course, maple syrup, pancakes, and jelly beans. My mom and I went through practically every aisle on each floor. We didn't really know what to get for lunch, and it was already late afternoon, so we opted for some baked goods and sandwiches. Then it was time to hop into an Uber and back to the hotel. We ran out of drinks so we went to a nearby market and got some orange juice. I bought a Lady Dior bag. If you want to see that review, I will post it up very soon. So here's a preview. It is the small Lady Dior in Amaranth. I had to try some more French chips. I got another Lay's bag and this is like caramelized onion and I got this rotisserie chicken again. It's interesting. It tastes a little weird at first but the flavor grows on you. And I got a bunch of other things which I'll flip the camera the other way and put things down because I'll drop my phone if I don't. I have dropped my phone more than I would like to admit during this trip. It got a little banged up. It the case broke a little, but my phone is safe. I'm going to eat now and actually jump into a meeting because I have 7 a.m. meeting back in California. Here at dinner. So one thing I noticed about French culture that it was pretty noticeable back then is they open up late at night just to drink or smoke, neither of which I participate in. So it does defeat the purpose, but there are still a lot of shops that are open. So from lingeries to other cuisine, you can find it all, especially in the night. finished my last session of the hammam and I'm sad to say it's my last 
session at this hotel. It's been a blast and I've enjoyed it so much. There's a traffic jam. This truck can't turn and the guy refuses to move his car. So now everyone's stuck in motorcycles are just going on the sidewalk because, you know, why not? Alright, so apparently they don't know who the owner is so they're going to push the car instead. You know, you don't exactly ever see this in the States. Why not have a go at it? Very successful. Oh, we're getting more help here. Some good patrons, good Samaritans trying to move the car. We're actually making some headway. For those of you who are invested, they were able to successfully move the van and the truck made it without scraping anyone. Thanks for watching!